brought to you by Kellogg's. Kellogg's cereals, the best to you each morning. From Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now, live from New York City, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you. And on my left, I'm very happy to be able to present again, returning to this panel, a brilliant and very busy actor. Uh, you will be seeing him February 5th on the Hallmark Playhouse and in a riotous film, which will be coming out soon, called Lovers Must Learn. Lover, come back. I knew I would get it right. I had a note on it. Lover, come back. And here he is, Tony Randall. We all must learn and I must learn to walk. It is my happy duty and uh, honor to present for the first time to the panel one of my favorite tourists in New York, 98 pounds of dynamite and mother of four, Jane Powell. <laughs> the slip on your apron. Did you see me slip? <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, the man with whom I would most likely to sing a duet, the eminent publisher of Random House, Mr. Bennett Sir. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the dean of panel moderators, and I always remember Nicholas Murray Butler, who was the president of Columbia University before Dwight Eisenhower was, always used to say, there is nothing lower than a dean. Here's Dean Daly. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let that remark pass, mostly because I haven't thought of anything to say yet, but give me a little bit of time. Miss Powell and Tony Randall, it's nice to have you with us on the panel tonight. Bennett, I suppose you had to come. <laughs> <laughs> but what is uh, most pleasant is we have some very interesting occupations and some nice people who brought them to the theater, and we hope to puzzle the panel rather completely in the next half hour. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the program and we'll meet our first challenger after this word from Kellogg's. Hi, I guess you all know the, the marks of the world traveler, but in this particular case I am not the traveler. The ambassador of goodwill is right here. It's Kellogg's Corn Flakes. It brings the best to you each morning. It's the best liked, the world's favorite. Now here are some of the ways that the world's favorite is dressed in different countries. In Australia, for instance, the package looks pretty much like it does here at home, but in England, it's very different. And also uh, in Sweden and in Holland. Now, here's the way the package looks in Africa, for instance, and then again, here's the way it looks in Mexico. But the flakes have the same fresh appetizing look, crisp in milk and fresh from the oven taste. See, that's Kellogg's secret a flavor that no other cereal has. So how about it? Why not enjoy the big favorite, the real thing, Kellogg's Corn Flakes? Good nourishment. Set yourself up with a bowl of Kellogg's Corn Flakes tomorrow. And now let's meet our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Actually, I think you probably, from the reaction, have already recognized our first contestant, Gene Fulmer, the middleweight boxing champion of the world, a title that he regained, I believe, in December when you knocked out Benny Perret in the 10th round. Is that right, Gene? Well, I uh, defended it successfully. You then. defended it successfully. Sorry, I got that right. Now, Gene is here, and of course, you all know what he does. But we feel that Bennett is beginning to get neurotic, so we've brought Gene here so that Bennett can guess what he does. And we've told him, and now it'll be easier. Right, Bennett? 
Now, I've announced that Gene is the middleweight boxing champion of the world, so, panel, you're aware of the fact that uh, he is here for another purpose. He has a basic occupation, which you have to guess. First of all, where are you from, Gene? West Jordan, Utah. Is that near Salt Lake City? Yes, it's just outside of Salt Lake. Just out of Well, I must say I envy you. Mrs. Daly and I went out there as the guests of Bob Hinckley, whom you might know. Oh, yes. Just before they went over to the Tabernacle and listened to one of the great organ concerts. It is. They're uh, fine. Great, it's a great concert. Say. Well, now that you've met the panel, we'll do it formally. Panel, may I present Gene Fulmer? Fine. Now, would you join me over here, Gene? Do you know how we keep score? Yes. On, the, on the program, fine. Then we'll let the audience at home and the audience in the theater know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right, panel, we can tell you that Mr. Fulmer is self-employed and he deals in a product. And we'll begin the general questioning with Dorothy Kilgallen. Oh, uh, Jean, do you work with your hands? Yes. Uh, is this product something that uh, I would be likely to have around the house? Yes, likely. Uh, is it, uh, or has it ever been a living thing, either plant life or animal life? Yes, it has. Uh, are you engaged in anything that might be termed farming or ranching? Yes. Is it farming? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Randall. Do you raise some sort of animal? Yes. Would we consider it an odd animal, such as rattlesnakes? No. No. Two down a date to go, Miss Powell. Is it something that every home should have? Yes. <laughs> I would say so. We certainly would like to see the day come, wouldn't we, Dean? Right. When every American home had this product, I would this say product. so. And it is an animal, and it's raised on a farm. Well, it's raised on a, on a farm or ranch, I farm would think, ranch. probably. Well, in the east you call them farms, and in, in the south or in the west we call them ranches. That, that that's difference? about it, yeah. Uh, is it an edible product? No. That's uh, three down and four to go, Mr. Sir. Gene, is Are it you? a four-legged animal? Yes. Is it an animal that would more likely be found outside the house than inside the house? Well, if I may, Gene, I would say that under some circumstances, we'd agree that you tend to find it outside of the house, that under other circumstances, um, you tend to find it inside the house. <laughs> Would the, uh, would the thing be that it would be more likely to be outside while it's alive and more likely to be inside after it's ready to be eaten? Is that what you're trying to tell me, John? <laughs> well, I would say that some part of what you just said has validity, but uh, other parts uh, are not necessarily valid. Has this uh, animal that you are dealing with, Jane, got something covering its hide? such as either fur or Coat, wool. A pair of pants, a suit, something like fur that. Or <laughs> something covering the animal? Yes. Yes. Would it be wool that's covering it? Is it sheep that you're raising? No. No. Four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, does this animal ever cover people, such as women? Yes. Would I be likely to have this animal hanging in my closet at home? I hope so. Is it mink? Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jane is a mink rancher and actually is in New York, so that fortunately we could ask him to come and join us tonight because what do you he's mean been he here for the mink. Whoever eats mink. He didn't say. No, he we didn't say. Time. You, you, you just brought that up yourself and we <laughs> thought you were having so much fun chewing on the mink. <laughs> <laughs> but Jane has been at the mink auctions here in New York and sold 400 skins, I believe. That's right. Is that right? Yeah. First time. Yeah, there you go. The, the idea of the whole thing was flashing through my mind as Jane was asking her questions and fingering her sable. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you. I take it. I'm I'm glad you told me, Dorothy. I was about to make some stupid comment about the mink that Miss Jane was wearing. Well, but Gene, I must say, if, if I may take a minute, I hope it won't embarrass you. He's also received the Boxing Writers Award. I think one of the finest awards that a man in, in the boxing profession can hope to achieve because of the, the fine uh, habits and conduct which he has brought to boxing. And certainly it's a sport which needs it. He does it great credit. He does his state of Utah great credit. And uh, you've done us credit by being our guest tonight. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Gene. It's been a pleasure. It's wonderful to have you with us. All right, 
Let's meet our second challenger. Would you enter and sign in, please? Natalie. Is that right? Yes. Is it Miss or Mrs. Kushner? Miss Kushner, where are you from? I'm from Washington. From Washington? Nice to have you with us. Miss Kushner, may I present our panel? And now would you join me over here? Uh, are you familiar with the way we keep score, Miss Kushner? Yes. Fine, then we'll let the audience at home and the audience in the theater know exactly what your line is. We um, can tell you that Miss Kushner is salaried, deals in a service, and we'll begin the general questioning with um, uh, Tony Randall. Do you work for a profit-making organization? No. One down and nine to go. I'm hot Powell. tonight. <laughs> <laughs> is uh, your job political in any way? Um, you mean here? In what sense do you mean? Well, well, having to let, deal let me ask you, Miss Jen. Do you mean specifically here in? in a membership in either one of the great political parties and activity in the behalf of either one of these parties as a matter of the well, general political... Well, I had mostly a right. government job. Put you it mean, is it, is it a, a government job? A just government in... job. Is it a government job? Oh. Yes, it is a government job. Um, does it deal with politics in any way, either of the Republican Party or the Democratic Party? No. No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. This question, I wonder if you notice it, between... Yes, Miss Powell took off that fur piece. <laughs> you know, and if this show goes on long enough, it's going to be a very interesting show. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I think I ought to explain to you, Miss Kushner, anything can happen in this half hour. So <laughs> just hang on. <laughs> Miss Kushner, uh, the work that you do for the government, uh, is this a job? that uh, you have to pay some kind of examination, civil service or something of the sort to get? Oh, yes. Do you work in one of the government buildings in Washington? Sometimes. Or oh, you move around in this job? Yes. Do you work for one of the departments? Uh, yes. Is it one of the departments has anything to do with national defense? You mean specifically here? Army, the... Navy, Air Force, or... Uh... Oh, good. No, the, or the Department of Defense, the overall thing. Yeah. That's fine, no. Bennett. Thank no. you. That's three down and seven to go, Ms. Gilgal. Uh, Ms. Kushner, does your work ever take you to the White House? Yes. Uh, do you ever go into the President's office? Yes. Uh, do you go in in a capacity of advising or assisting him? Uh, yes. Would it be advising more than assisting? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Randall. We haven't established what kind of service you perform as you move about. Would you say it's a, uh, in the nature of a secretarial service? No. Five down and five to go, Miss Powell. Do you deal mostly with men? I would say so, yes. Yes, but this is not necessarily pertinent to um, the development of, <laughs> of uh, what the line may be. I <laughs> see. Um, do you live in Washington? Yes, I do. Uh, could you live any place else and perform your service? Yes, the service itself yes, could so. be performed, yes. Uh, goodness. Would it mostly pertain to, would your service be mostly uh, used in the large cities? No. No, not necessarily so. Six down and four to go, Mr. Sir. This question, do your services have anything to do with any of the functions that take place at the White House? Banquets or meetings of one sort or another there? Mm -hmm. They could, I think, would be the best answer to that, Bennett. Well, do you ever perform any of your services for Mrs. Kennedy? Yes. In other words, then you work for the Kennedy family rather than for the president, or is it that you work exclusively for Mrs. Kennedy? Do you work exclusively for Mrs. Kennedy? No. No, that's fine, Bennett. Yeah. That Seven out of three to go, Miss Kilgallis. Miss Kushner, uh, 
When you have left a, pe a place, is it more attractive looking than it was when you went in? I beg your pardon. <laughs> You know perfectly well what I mean, John. I know, Dorothy. We're just teasing you. Uh, but, I would... Uh, no, the, the answer would be no. It hasn't any, uh, any of that connotation. I could get no too, Mr. Though. Randall? Are you on the White House staff? No. Nine down and but one to go, Miss Powell. as I get. <laughs> um, yours is mostly an advisory capacity, you say. No, no. Actually, the question was advise or assist, and it was determined that advise was not the principal function. Oh, Mr. Sir, shall I... Do you have anything to do with the Secret Service? You're very secretive. <laughs> no. No, that's ten down and no more to go. And uh, Ms. Kushner is a Russian interpreter for the United States State Department, and, of course, her services were used, I believe I'm correct, when uh, Nikita Khrushchev was here. You were at that time translating, and she translates at the White House, State Department, travels with foreign dignitaries who are here who do not speak our language, and uh, we had a, I hope, a colleague of yours, Mr. Taklevsky, mm -hmm. he was with us after I came back from Moscow, he was uh, traveling with us in Moscow. Did, Kushner, did you understand what Mr. Khrushchev was saying that day, he was banging his shoe on the desk? Well, I didn't look at television, but I, uh, I heard reports, and I'm afraid I did. <laughs> <laughs> I won't ask you what he said, but you also, <laughs> you also went to Vienna with President Kennedy did, yes. Kennedy, did you not, when he went over there last year? And full-time employee of the State Department, and you were, you were born in Russia? Yes, I was. Where in, where in Russia? In Siberia. In Siberia. Well, glad you're with us. <laughs> we went to Siberia, went out to Sverdlovsk and uh, uh, Novosibirsk. Mm -hmm. And I must say that for Americans, it's a shock to find it isn't all wild wilderness, mm -hmm. that there are some great cities there, and it's a beautiful country. Nice to have had you with us, and I hope you enjoyed your stay. I know you were a little bit frightened of those television cameras, but you mustn't be. Good to have you with us, man. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, this word from our sponsor. Hi, this is Dennis James again. Say, what do you do when your family gives you a, a bathroom scale for Christmas? Well, I know what I do, because I can take a hint. It's time for me to start losing a few pounds. And incidentally, I know the way to do it. With the special K breakfast. A mighty appetizing meal, too. You get fruit, Kellogg's Special K, skim milk, sugar, and black coffee or tea. Good, solid food, but a mere 240 calories. So if the holidays have left you a little heftier than you'd like to be, I suggest you pick up a package of Special K soon. On the back, you'll find the menu for the Special K breakfast and how it helps common sense weight control. Actually, I think you'll enjoy Special K even if you aren't watching the scales because it's light and crisp, tastes really good. And when you team it up with milk, you get a healthy serving of complete high-quality protein. Get yourself a package of Kellogg's Special K soon, okay? Okay. Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which, as you all know, the panel is always blindfolded. Are they... Blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, John. Yes, Good. Sir. Will you enter Mystery Challenger and sign in, please? <laughs> all right, panel, as you know, in the case of our Mystery Challenger, a different form of questioning. One question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and we'll begin with uh, Bennett Cerf. Have you ever starred or played a very important part in a motion picture? Yes. Miss Kilgallen? Are you primarily a motion picture star rather than a record star or a television star? Uh -uh. One down and nine to go, Mr. Randall. Have you appeared on Broadway in a play? Yes. Two down and eight to was go, that a no? Powell. That was a no, yes, sir. That was a no. Um, are you uh, a New York resident? <clears throat> Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. 
Have you ever starred in a nightclub or at a hotel room? Yes. Miss Kilgallen? Are you currently playing at the Copacabana? Uh-uh. Four down and six to go, Mr. Randall. Are you currently playing in any nightclub in New York or dinner room? Yeah, yeah. Miss Powell? Oh, my. I think I've got it. Are you uh, appearing at the, uh, the Waldorf? No. Five down and five to go, Mr. Oh. Sir. Then I, I take it you're not Carol Channing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> it's a dirty trick. Leaves me out on a limb. <laughs> uh, are you appearing at either the Plaza or the Pierre? Uh -uh. Six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. Are you playing in Greenwich Village? No. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Randall. There's something we haven't established. Are you a man or a woman? <laughs> this is very difficult to answer yes or no. Take your choice. Uh, the voice could be either. It's a clever job. It, are, are you a woman? Yes. Miss Powell? Oh, my goodness. I thought, I thought there were so many clubs that were closed. Um, <laughs> oh, my. Oh, goodness. <laughs> um, I'm afraid I'm going to have to pass on this. Uh, Mr. Sir? I haven't the vaguest idea I passed to. Miss Kilgallen? Are you playing in a nightclub which is not attached to a hotel? Yes. Mr. Randall? Do you have a movie now playing in the Broadway scene? Mm -mm. Eight down and two to go, Miss Powell? You're not Sophie Tucker, are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Nine down and one to go, Mr. Sir. She's always yeah. working in a club. <laughs> you, you sing blues songs and, uh, and uh, folk songs at all? Yeah. yeah. Yes and no. I mean, I think you're covering one area, but, but we can't give you any more information to say yes. Qualified yes, right. Miss Kilgallen. Miss Fitzgerald. Uh, are you playing at Basin Street East? Are you Ella Fitzgerald? Yes. yes. Oh. <laughs> I must congratulate the audience, because as we passed Ben and I said, Ella, Ella Fitzgerald. And nobody gave any signal at all, so the Dorothy had to go and get it all by herself. I just drew a blank on Basin Street. I'm trying to think of every place and finally arrived at it. <laughs> I can remember, Miss Ella, about, just about this time last year, you were in the inaugural gallery in Washington. Oh, yes. And Mrs. Daly and I were there, and you were wonderful. Thank you. As a matter of fact, why do I, with my incompetence in this field, judge? I think it is a matter of record that Bing Crosby has said, man, woman, or child, Ella Fitzgerald is the greatest. Oh, thank, you. thank you so much thank for being our guest. Lovely to have you with us. Another confession after this word from our alternate sponsor. There are good drivers and there are bad drivers. And the bad ones often have accidents. That's not news to you. But this is news. Now, all states' good drivers save money with all states' new good driver rate. You probably qualify because eight out of 10 drivers have good driving records. If so, your good driving skill may entitle you to much lower rates than those paid by bad drivers who have accidents. Of course, you get those other famous features of Allstate too. Fast claim service and help when you need it. Get more information about Allstate's new good driver rates. See an Allstate agent at Sears, at an Allstate office, or just phone Allstate. It's more proof you're in good hands with Allstate. And now let's meet a final contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Joseph Greco. Right, sir? <laughs> Mr. Greco, where are you from? Brooklyn. Mr. Greco is from Brooklyn. May I present our panel, Mr. Greco? Will you join me over here? Do you know how we keep score? Fine, we'll let the audience at home and the audience in the theater know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right, 
panel. We have very little time for you to exercise your splendid abilities. <laughs> Mr. Greco is salaried, and he deals in a product, and we'll begin with Miss Powell. Is your product applied to uh, a man and woman? Yes. Uh, is it a wearable product? A wearable product? No. no. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Greco, one of the nicest gentlemen I ever knew was, was uh, Mr. Greco who owned a barber shop. Can I rule out barbering entirely from your uh, career? Is the product that you have something to do with made of uh, some solid substance? Yes. Uh, can it be used in the home? No. No, it's not made to be used in the home, and on that basis we'll say it should not be. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, can it be used out of doors? Yes. Is it usually used out of doors? Yes. Uh, would you think it rather strange if I owned one of these products? No. Would you wouldn't think it strange if, if no. Dorothy owned one of no. these? Well, there you go. You never can tell. <laughs> Go ahead, Dorothy. <laughs> Let me say that Mr. Greco doesn't think it would be strange. Yeah, I would you do. consider it might be. Uh, is it... <laughs> if I had one and I walked down Fifth Avenue, would it show? <laughs> yes. Yes, if you had it with you, it would. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is this an inanimate object? Yes. Does it have any movable parts? Yes. Would it be difficult to hold in my hand? Yes. Is it as big as a telephone booth? <laughs> That's it! <laughs> That's wonderful. I think I slept all the time first, Dorothy, but you got it. Actually, Mr. Greco works for the Sharon Metallic Company in Brooklyn, <laughs> and they make those attractive all-metal telephone booths that they're installing outside around in the city of I New York. It's all popped into my head. Isn't that wonderful? Mr. Greco, yes, thank you for making it. It's interesting. Yes, thank you. You take that one, Ruth, and, and dress up. Yeah. Now we have just enough time to say good night, Miss Kilgallen. Good night, John, and good night, Tony, and good luck on the Hallmark Playhouse, Arsenic and Old Lace. <laughs> Thank you. Good night, Dorothy. Good night, Jane. Happy trip back. <laughs> good night, Tony. Good night, Bennett. Wish we had six more contestants, Jane. <laughs> good night, John. <laughs> good night, Bennett, and good night, Arlene Francis out there in the Big West. Come back and see us soon. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us on What's My Line. What's My Line is a CBS television network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Cotton. This is Johnny Olson speaking. In 12 years, the communists have taken over 4 million square miles. Help fight communism. Send your contribution to Radio Free Europe. Also brings you Dennis the Menace on CBS television over most of these stations. What's my line? Brought to you by Kellogg's. Kellogg's cereals. The best to you each morning. From Kellogg's of Battle Creek.